What is going on Adventure Nation? In this episode we're continuing our trek southwest on the Glen Highway, ending up somewhere around the Anchorage area. This is the Motorhome Experiment. Well, we are going to Palmer first, but we're <laughs> going to end the, the video, probably the video in somewhere in Anchorage. <laughs> so, yeah, just I'm yeah. kind of projecting where we might be when we the video's done. We have no done. idea where we're going we exactly, know. so just say that area. We were going to stay overnight here, and we have now been here for three days. So. <clears throat> oh, totally worth it. I mean, just the views are amazing. The water right next to us, glacier water. We have seen salmon just swimming just along here. Right in here, the <clears throat> salmon have been popping up. Or, of course, we think they're salmon. They could be totally halibut. Who knows? Could be shark. I think halibut is actually uh, ocean. <laughs> sea water. Could be a whale shark. <laughs> I don't know. We pretty much assume that everything in the river here is a salmon. The yep. bears don't seem to think that because they're not around anywhere. We have not seen a bear yet. Everyone keeps warning us about all the bears in Alaska, but they no bears. No bears. And there's fish for them to eat. There's us for them to eat. And they just have it's not shown up. It's starting to be a little bit like moose on the East Coast. Yeah, moose where, in Eastern Canada. Yeah, they said they are, but we don't see them anywhere. So I think it's a tourist thing. So they're just trying to get people to come up here yes. to see the bears. But anyways, we're going to head down the road today and to Palmer and then Anchorage. And we're going to roll the cameras and see what happens. Ready to roll? Kevin is dancing. Kevin is over here dancing, trying to screw me up so that there's more bloopers. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Before we leave this spot, let me show you around from a bird's eye view. That is so corny, but I'm keeping it anyways. If you are a fisherman, salmon coming right up to your front door, which was kind of cool. And we had read on freecampsites.net that it was a nightmare because there were so many ATVs and blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh it's a big old Tuscany there. Uh, about a 38 footer with a four up trailer with ATVs and everything. So there's spots for big rigs down in here, but there wasn't, we saw one ATV the entire three days we were here and he came by really slowly. Nobody's blasting through that campground with ATVs. It's just not that big of a place. At least in our experience. At least in our experience, yes. Because we have not been here in a weekend. The weekend is gonna start tomorrow, so maybe then might be more uh, four wheelers out. Yep, ready when you are, dude. Very cool spot on the Palmer and some cool stuff up the road, we think. Who knows? Good morning, everybody. I guess probably good afternoon good by afternoon. now. Yeah. We are in Palmer, Alaska. We rolled down here yesterday. We didn't do much yesterday, except for get some work caught up. The site we're in now is not quite as pretty as we were the other day. You can see we're kind of up here away from the river. I mean, but we still have water view. We didn't want to park down here by the river because it's kind of eroding pretty badly. You can see there's a tree here that's fallen over into the river. So we could just picture our RV doing that exact same thing. I think we could have tested it. So we decided not to park down here. I don't know if I want to test this. This here. Yeah, there's even crack. So we're gonna avoid parking right close to the river in this particular section, but we are gonna head over to a place right now where we're gonna pick fruit. It's supposed to be like a you pick fruits and vegetables, so yes. Right, Never cool. done that myself, so. All right, well, let's head on over there. So Lorena, it doesn't look like there is really anything that we're gonna be picking here. I think oh, this is just a berry farm. Yeah, but I think it's just like a 
you just walk up and and just load them. Yeah, it's just, just kind of like farm market. I don't think it's like you pick and go out into the field yourself. <laughs> Let's it's, see. You pick it up off of the table. <laughs> you yes. pick it up off the shelf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, Lori, you're lucky. It is a pick place. Yes. So we're heading out to the fields now. Now everybody has a little wagon but us, so we're gonna have to carry everything ourselves. We could use this wagon. Hey, uh, I mean, if you get done, you should definitely come out here. See, now the problem that we're running into is that none of us know how to pick this stuff. We go to the grocery store and we grab it off a shelf. We don't, nobody knows what they're doing. Well, we came unprepared. We don't have anything to cut the stuff with. We do have some bags, but we're just used to grabbing it off the grocery store shelf and then taking it up to the counter and the cashier just tells us how much we owe. So, I don't know what we're doing out here. We don't have scissors to be kind of on the spinach or stuff like that, or the kale. People here are prepared. They know what they're coming for. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of folks out here, and they seem to know what they're doing. Or at least they seem to know. Okay, now we're kale. So. Do you know what you're doing? I don't have scissors. That's still me, or a, or a blade. I should have had that. It would be easier, but I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Just uh, kidding right there. What you got there, Kevin? Potatoes. You want to know why? Because of fat. And it's a part of the American diet and the French diet and the Freedom diet. Can you okay. juggle potatoes? Yes. Watch. Nicely hey. done. How's this look, everybody? There you go. That's That's all you, buddy. Okay, we're learning how to harvest radishes. It should just say how to harvest. Go to the grocery store. Oh my God, learn where your food comes from. I would die without grocery stores because this isn't, this is less fun than shopping. All right, Lorena, what are you doing here? I'm trying to find good sized radishes because they're all tiny, like these are super tiny. I mean, you can see it based on my finger how tiny it is. Mm -hmm. But I think I found one here. So it's actually pretty good size. Oh yeah. So you find it there and then you just kind of wiggle it out. Wiggle oh it. yeah, that's a decent size there. Yeah. So the good. first one I have found this size, they're all like very small. Just trying to find the right size. Look at this one, like compared to the one I just picked. Yeah, kind of tiny, huh? Kind of tiny. They're, most of them are this size. Let's move down away from where people have been. Yeah, we think we hit the mother load here with some decent sized ones. No, not that one. This one, right here. That one there? Pull it, pull. All right, I'm gonna try this here. Pull Watch, the plug. let's see. Oh, pull the plug, let me see. Oh, and, oh yeah, that's, that's what I'm size. talking about. Here's the thing, you don't suppose just to yank them out because if they're not of your desired size, at that point they're dying. So you suppose just to see from the top to see if it's something that you will like and if you like it, then you, at that point, pull it out. Like here, we're gonna see you kind of move your finger around it to clean it up around the area and then see if it's the right size before you pull it out. So this is a little bit kind of like smaller, but yeah. let's pull it out just. No, that's a decent size. Yes. Cool. Lori, this is the vegetarian's version of kill it and grill it. Yes, it's like working for your food. <laughs> <laughs> What's really cool about this, I think it's probably a great place to bring your kids out so you can teach them about where their food comes from. Or your husband, in this case. <laughs> like, he doesn't or, even know where it comes from. Well, I grew up on a farm, but we didn't pick any of it ourselves. We had, you know, it was, uh, the farms were owned by big corporate growers, so we didn't actually pick any of the corn or any of that stuff, so it is I pretty cool. There's certain reward when you pick your own stuff and then use it. I mean, yeah, you feel... and I think if you were to ask your kid where potatoes or certain things come from, they just think it's from a can. <laughs> for the most part. Yes, so, from the freezer. <laughs> from the freezer. Now we're gonna head into potato land. Mm -hmm. 
So potatoes, you don't actually pick them. There's a machine that goes through that uh, pulls the potatoes up and then you just walk down the row and grab the potatoes from where the machine picked them up. So we're gonna wander out and do that. We're now out in search of zucchini and this stuff is crazy. We found them. Now, this is what happens when you don't come prepared with a, with something to cut it with. Yeah. And this one, actually, somebody lent me their uh, blade, so. Very cool. I guess that means zucchini spaghetti or something for yes. the next two to three weeks. I think I thought about that. Oh, great. Now I gave her that yeah, idea. Now that you brought it up. Now we're in line to pay for our veggies. Busy place. All right, we are all checked out. We found out that we could have got knives at the front counter, which would have been really good to know before we were out there trying to cut stuff with our hands. We're such newbies. <laughs> very much newbies. Very, very busy place, but very cool. The line hasn't got smaller since we got here, so they did tell us that early in the morning is the best time to come. So if you're in town here in Palmer, you want to come out here at 9 a.m. when they open and then they can give you a little bit more instruction on how it all works, which is kind of nice. We could have used that. <laughs> what is the name of this place? Where are uh, we? Pyrus. Pyrus. Something, something. Pyrus. It's PPP. We'll put it down here because <laughs> we don't know where we are. It's Pyrus. I do know that. I remember seeing it on her shirt. Pyrus Peppermint Farm? No. No. But it's PPP something. Peppermint. Pyro's peppermint patty. The other cool thing about this place is the views while you're picking are pretty insane. I'm sitting here getting my editing done and sometimes you're really close to your neighbors and sometimes you don't know who those neighbors might be. You just reach out and touch someone. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy's thinking about jumping. No. No, maybe not. Look, Ozzy. It's easy. See? If mommy can reach it, you can reach it. Come oh, on. you just scared of me. He was going to do it. He was my guy. We decided to go out for a walk after dinner and after our last Saturday live. Check that out in the background. Mountains, river. There's not much to see around here, really. The views aren't that spectacular. And yes, my sarcasm is strong. The sarcasm is strong with this one. Good morning, everybody. Morning, morning. We are still just outside of Palmer, Alaska in our little boondocking spot here next to the famous veganrv.com and the Matanuska River. Pretty sure it's the Matanuska River. It is. And today we're gonna do something that's probably fairly unique to Alaska. So let's get going. Yes, let's go. Do you guys think this is what we're doing today is probably fairly unique, I think, to Alaska, right? Well, or it, it might I be other say, parts of the world, I, but... I would not say... Yeah. i say other parts of the world... That are north. Yeah. But it's very... It's, I, I feel like it's fairly unique. Yeah. <laughs> and it has something to do with Alex Trebek. So, yeah. there's a hint. Even crazier. <clears throat> Phrase it in the form of a question below in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be our baby girl here on the farm, and that's gonna be Xenon. Xenon's gonna be that girl that's gonna be right behind me over in that little area with her mother, Cayenne. Cayenne is also a second time mother. Now, this girl that's kind of walking right behind over here, that's gonna be a Kadia. Acadia is going to be one of our national park kids. 
She's the only girl within that group. So at one years old, their horns start sticking out horizontally from their head. At two years old, just like a Kadia right here, their horns start sticking out in front of their face. Three to four, they swoop down to the sides. And at four to five, they get a boss on top. And that's pretty much maturity right there. The skull can be pretty heavy. It's about 40 to 45 pounds. The reason for that is because of this nice horn structure they have on top of their head. This horn structure is made of keratin, which is like your fingernails, and it is very thick, so that's what allows it to be so heavy. With a male, their horn structure is going to be about three to four inches thick in total. So that is how we can identify this one right here as a male. Yeah, so these guys are going to be located within the chutes. The reason for that is because these guys are at that one year age. How was your tour? So that's really Amazing. There are some excellent questions asked. Are you going to adopt a muskox? Are you a muskox? <laughs> <laughs> What does that uh, feel like, Lori? Outside, it's a little bit rough. But if you go inside, it's like it's extremely soft. So it's crazy that it is. Oh, wow. Feels like long-haired Aussie. Yeah. Ooh, and then that's really soft, yeah. No, that feels like Aussie soft. Pretty cool, huh? It's very cool. Okay, this here is what they call proving ball. It's a 500 pound ball. They have since removed it because the muskox will get the thing rolling and then roll it through a fence like a giant bowling ball. But they have other ones out there now so that they can have something to play with and knock around and stuff, so that's pretty cool. We have completed our trip to the muskox farm and now we're gonna roll out of this little boondocking spot and down the road into Anchorage. Time to roll out of Palmer. The muskox farm tour was very, very cool. Very pretty, and they have a few uh, baby ones, so that was super cute to see. And we wanted, they actually do uh, scarves and beanies and gloves and all this stuff with the, how you call it, the sheddings? The, the kiviot. The ki kiviot. It's just like a, <laughs> it's a hard word for me. But, uh, Super cool place. And the, yeah, once they shed, they, they use it kind of like wool, but it sheds naturally, not like a sheep And so. It's not like they shave them, it's actually they pick that up. Like usually from, they said from April to June, that is when they shed, is when they pick that up. With a hair pick, like an afro pick. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And uh, Cannon, Sierra, and the other gang there, they were really fun. I think it was $11 a person to yeah. go there. And you can also adopt a muskox, which was kind of interesting. And the godfather of the muskox herd is actually Alex Trebek. I, I don't know how Alex Trebek got involved, but he did. But now we are rolling out of Palmer, Alaska, and we're heading down into the Anchorage area, getting closer into the Kenai Peninsula. Really looking forward to the next week or so. And by the way, you see the bridge that we're gonna pass? We're close to Palmer, not right in the center of Palmer. We were not in a campground, we were boondocking right next to the river. You can find that in free campsites on that. Uh, it's pretty to look at the river. It was not quiet at all. A lot of traffic, a lot of people coming, taking pictures and parking and uh, loud engines sometimes. But for the most part, it was okay. It was a good stop just for an overnight, two nights. Well, I think we did basically two nights. Yeah, for a couple nights stay, it's all right. And as we roll into Anchorage, Alaska, this is where we're going to end this episode. So we'd love for you to get to know us a little bit, hang out with us. And that means you got to hit that subscribe button. And it would be equally as cool if you liked the video. And we'll see you again next time. Bye now. All right. We completed the muskarn. Muskox? Muskarn? Whatever.